Max Verstappen of Red Bull Racing joins us right now. Max, good morning, buddy. It's great to catch up with you, sir. Nine wins in a row, just phenomenal. You're trying to make it 10 at Monza. How special would that be? Yeah, I mean, of course, it's something that I never even, you know, thought about that that is even possible, right? But now that we have won nine in a row, uh, tying the record, um, of course, you want more. And uh, I think we have a we have a good opportunity, but um, F1 races are never uh, straightforward. There are a lot of things that can, uh, can happen. Um, but yeah, I'm excited, of course, for the weekend. Max, let's go back a couple of decades. Tell me back to the days when you were in a go-kart and you got to be around people like Michael Schumacher and your father, for that matter, as well. Is that where this hunger, desire comes from to dominate, even after you get win after win? Yeah, I think it's, I mean, of course, you need, you, you, you really want it uh, from a young age. But um, I think also the way I grew up, um, you know, having the experience of my dad by my side, um, yeah, for sure, from a very young age, I think you, um, you know, get prepared in a in a different way, I guess. And uh, yeah, for me, it's never good enough. You know, even um, you try to, you know, look for the little details that can go better. I mean, for sure, this year so far, I think has been amazing. But um, yeah, I will never be uh, satisfied uh, at the end of the day. Max, Tom and I were talking about Marco van Basten retiring from football at 28. And I always hear people talk about you. They say things like, he's going to get bored. He's going to get bored by this or potentially step away. Do the records that Schumacher set, are they worth sticking around for you, Max? Is that something that drives you? Um, like, I never really um, targeted, like, records. Um, I, of course, really enjoy what I'm doing now. And I think for me, at the moment, it's the opposite. This, for me, is not boring. This is really exciting. Like, I'm always very motivated to get to the track i think it's more when uh you're not winning anymore and there is also no real plan in place or a future where you see yourself winning again then probably you get bored but uh, i think retiring at 28 for me uh is probably a bit too soon and max john farrow is steeped in all that you do he grew up in england and lives formula one i'm your ugly american i'm new to this i'm the one you need at las vegas you need at austin miami wherever and in reading about this and i go to the great journalist peter windsor on this he says you do corners and turns like nobody he talks of silverstone and the three turns of maggots and bat how do you approach the tight turns of Formula One? Peter Windsor says that's the difference. Um, I think, you know, everyone has their own driving style, but also I think what is key in our sport is that you're able to adapt to whatever is needed. So, you know, every year we have a new car, a different looking car, and every single car drives a bit differently. And I think, um, yeah, you always have to adapt and learn and try to grow, try to be different, try to really you know, get the most out of the car. And if the car is driven the fastest way in, in a different way than what you're used to, you have to try and um, adjust to that. Do you wish for a smaller, lighter car? Uh, of course, that would be ideal, but you also have to be realistic, I think, with the safety standards that are you know, always improving every single year. That is not always possible to go lighter, but I'm, I'm sure you know we are looking into... Uh, the future regulations as well to try and um, yeah make it better. And Max, make your bosses like are thinking about the commercial stuff. We caught up with Christian Horner. It's great to talk to Christian a month or so ago, and we were talking about the race Canada and how many races are now in new places, like in the United States, like in Vegas. For a man like yourself, can you compare, say, a Monza to a Miami, a Las Vegas? And Max, do you get excited about it when, for some people, the purists might complain about this just being a commercial event, moving away from the traditional race car racing and places like Monza and Silverstone? Well, the, the beautiful thing is, is that we have a lot of different Grand Prix still, and um, I think it would be very boring if they're all the same, right? And yes, I am very aware that, you know, um, we shouldn't go to all the, let's say, the commercial places, but I think also Las Vegas gives you a new, a unique opportunity. And then time will tell, you know, if it's the right way to go or not. But for sure, from my side, you know, I'm, I like the pure racetracks. I think in F1 car as well, it really comes alive on, on the proper racetracks like Monza, like Spa, like Silverstone. So for sure, you know, we need to keep these... Um, 
kind of tracks on, on, the, on the calendar. Max, they're always trying to rework the format when a car, a team goes through a period of dominance. I remember when it just used to be qualifying 30 minutes, fastest driver, fastest car, they get pole. Then they try to make qualifying more interesting. Do you think tweaking the format with sprint racing in one weekend, not the other, is that something that frustrates you as a driver? Yeah, I'm, I'm not really excited by these things because I think when something works really well, why do you need to try and mm -hmm. uh, tweak it? Um, and uh, yeah, this is, I think, a constant discussion. And uh, for sure, yeah. you know, some things will work out well, some don't. But uh, yeah, for me, trying to keep it like it is, you know, um, probably is the best thing forward. Because I always thought the qualifying format, and uh, you know, before you get into the, the single right. race, I think is very exciting. Max, I agree with you. I'm a complete hack at this, but I totally agree with you. The sprint thing is ridiculous. I just don't understand it. I love the qualification thing the day before. I love to tune into that. Max Verstappen, are you in a place is completely dominant in the sports involving all the money and the egos where can you control the future of who your teammate is. I understand there's autosport gossip and all that, but are you in a position now, Max, where you can dictate, discuss, or say who a future teammate will be? Well, this is always up to uh, the bosses and the team. I mean, of course, I'm, I'm a team member now for a long time. And of course, things, you know, you talk about stuff, but I'm not the one who is telling them what to do or, or deciding things at the end of the day. I need to focus on my job and that's to try and drive as quick as I can every single weekend. We well, do a good job of that, Max. A good job of that, <laughs> particularly this season. Max, how close are you with Checo? Yeah, we are very close. Honestly, I think um, we are very similar in a way also how we approach, I think, our life outside of Formula One. Um, you know, he's a real family person. Of course, he has his kids as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty similar. I think it's good to to try and you know sometimes switch off and just you know not think about Formula One, and I think that's where we can really relate. You know what people are like; they like to stir up gossip and tell stories. And Max, you've been reluctant to get involved in the Netflix series, which has been massive here stateside. Max, what's behind that reluctance? Why don't you like doing those things so much? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think at one point you know certain things are also a bit more private. Privacy uh, for me is very important, and um, you know I like things to be portrayed. Um, like they actually are, not with a lot of, um, let's say, spice to it. Um, but, you know, every year now, I mean, we had a good chat. Every year I do I do have an interview and I explain my side of the story, and I think that's important. Yeah. I know how important Netflix is in a way, of course, to try and attract um, new fans. But, of course, yeah, it's important also to to really see the reality of, of the sport. John, I'll let you ask. I mean, we're in London. We come back, and that gives us just enough time to go to Las Vegas oh, in November. Vegas. But, you know, if Max can pull some strings for us, I think possibly <laughs> we could be all Las Vegas with Red Bull. You want to ask him yourself? Or you no, want no, me to I'd ask? let you ask, please. I You're think more maybe gracious. Max would prefer us to ask Christian Horner, and we'll ask Christian a little bit later. <clears> Max, I wanted to squeeze this in. I wanted your side of the story. I don't want to talk about the last race. I want to go back to Australia. Austria. Final lap of the Grand Prix. You have the opportunity to set the fastest lap. You make the call to make a pit, to put on fresh tyres and go around and set the fastest lap for a single point, Max. From your perspective, walk me through the thinking there. Is that something you've planned ahead of the race? Is that something you think about in the moment? And where does that confidence, that conviction come from? To go against the team who would like you to stay out and just make the call yourself. I can do it. I know I can do it. I've got the control, the ability to perform. Where does that come from, Max? Yeah, I mean, I always try to maximize everything I can. And, um, you know, I saw the opportunity for the extra points. So I was like, well, why not? Of course, there's always a bit of a risk um, with these kind of things. But at the other hand, no risk, no fun, right? So that's um, what was also going through my, uh, my head at the time. 